Hey, I'm Tommy Chong. Welcome to High on Homegrown. Yes, yes, everybody, and welcome to this week's Grow Guides from High and Homegrown, the cannabis podcast from Percy'sGrowing.com. In this week's Grow Guides, we're talking about soil. Uh, Last week, we did the hydroponics, so now we're going to move on to soil and tell you the different types of soil, and hopefully you'll be able to come up with a good decision on what kind of soil is going to be best for your grow. Of course, just like anything in this Grow Guide and any of the previous Grow Guides, you can always head over to Percy'sGrowing.com and start a thread and ask any questions you like if you need any extra help. But for now, we'll move straight into the episode. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn something. Make sure you got a pen and paper ready because there's lots of information in this episode. So for now, here you go. This is the Grow Guides All About Soil. I'll see you at the end of this. Enjoy. So last week, everybody, we spoke about hydroponics and all different kinds of hydroponic mediums and the pros and cons of each medium as well. And hydroponics is only one half of growing cannabis because the other way which people are going to most likely grow is in soil. And soil is a lot more complex than you would initially think. You just think it, you know, you plant your plant outside in the garden and it should grow just fine, which in most cases it will. But in some cases, it's more complex than that. There's different kinds of soil. They all do different kinds of things. Some are much better than others. and it's good to know what's going to work best for your growth. So that's what we're going to cover in this week's episode of the Grow Guides. So, uh, I mean, TG is the soil specialist, really. He, um, Monkey and Bob both growing cocoa, don't you, lads? We do. Yeah, Marge is a room. living soil grower. Mm-hmm. Yep, living soil. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I grow in both, really. Well, nothing right now, but, you know, I've grown in both. I mean, I grow out, outdoor flowers things such as that ornamentals in in, uh soil all the time but indoors Mm. cannabis no Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. only cocoa yeah i've done a few outdoors but i don't do much outdoors what about what about you Marge? you mix your own soil right you build your own stuff with the grower temple with uh with the recipe temple grower made yeah yeah the one that was posted in percy's growing and just gathered all the ingredients that I was able to pick up at my local Canadian tire. I did have backyard compost as well to add to the mix and Sweet. made a bin up of it. And that's what I use. Mm. And that sounds complex. You know, you built your own soil. I remember when I was first learning how to grow and it was like, build your own soil. What the fuck? Where do you even <laughs> begin with building your own yeah. soil? So it seems really complex, but it really isn't that complex. You just, source the ingredients the the right amount of the different things and it's in the recipe over on percy'sgrowing.com tg made it it's uh, from subcool's recipe right tg yeah you, you might as well tell us about your soil mate sure yeah um so my recipe is is my blend basically it was it's a combo of three different recipes um that i just amended using my own my, my background like i have a bachelor's in geology with kind of a heavy focus in soil science, I suppose. So that coupled with um, these three recipes that have been anecdotally and traditionally used in cannabis growing for years and years um, is where my recipe came from. Um, It's in Jorge Cervantes' uh, book. That's, you know, if you go to the website, Percy's Grow in there, the pictures I have are are right from Jorge's book. Um, The two recipes that I amended just for my own local inputs, because while those recipes are great, um, my focus is, you know, least uh, amount of environmental impact in the inorganic sense. It's not a truly organic super soil, but it's local and thus, um, I think, probably more neutral in terms of my carbon footprint than using the stuff like uh, back guano and the things like uh, that is, is listed that um maybe those guys that have more access of where they are um is why they have it in their recipe but anyway yeah so my recipe is a is a, an amendment of uh tom hill um sub cool and vic high mm-hmm. are the three three guys and it's made specifically for the ingredients that i can source locally here in saskatoon where i am but generally the ingredients are pretty ubiquitously available in most garden shops like 
not like just shitty garden shop that's like we got a couple bottles of fertilizer and one bag of soil but like an actual garden shop you know um, um things like blood meal and bone meal my soil uh you know i get lots of questions is it a living soil is it like the definition is a bit uh i guess malleable the way i like to describe it is it's a microbially fortified super soil so it doesn't rely specifically on the microbes like a pure living soil would which we'll get into more definitions of those later but uh it's kind of a combination that the microbes will supplement uh the uh everything else because there's plant available nutrients that are built in 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 the form of the blood meal and bone meal and everything else but yeah soil like as far as a soil goes you know the the basic definition of a soil is mineral content with organic matter mixed in with uh pore space most of which is or half of about which is filled with water or gas mm -hmm. um and so yeah that's that's basically what a soil is. My my soils have, like I said, a bunch of nutrients built in. Not all soils will have that, depending on the formation. You know, how did it form? Mine are, you know, basically. I, I like to think of mine baking like a cake, where the natural soils that are formed in in mm -hmm. the natural environment are totally dependent on things like the parent material, the mineral assemblage of the area, the microbial activity there, the climate so there's multiple things that will contribute to what the soil will end up like but mine is pretty you know standard i guess in in terms of what it contains and and what it does uh but yeah i don't know is that a pretty good definition yeah man or, well it along. seems to make yeah. sense but because i i know what you're talking about to some extent but somebody who is starting out and just looking into starting to grow their own cannabis building your own soil can come across as very intimidating yeah okay across, yeah complex so um, honestly, the best analogy I can come up with is a cake. You know, those like, basically you can buy uh, those boxes of fucking cake mm -hmm. uh, that you just put water in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's essentially, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's essentially, it's not quite that simple. I mean, it's more like making cake from scratch. So, you know, you have your eggs and your flour and your sugar and your, like Marge know about cakes more than <laughs> me, but uh, I don't know what the fuck is so it. So ran out of ideas Where, of what goes into cake then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Little, like, in varying amounts, right? There's mostly flour, lots of sugar, a little bit of... Some eggs. Maybe, some eggs, right? So that's exactly what a, my super soil is. It's it's a cake, basically. It's not really a true soil because mineralogically, there's not a lot of, like, content of, like, sand and an actual rock mineral type, like ground up, whether it's from microbial activity or from just a glacier fucking grinding shit. Um, my soil is more like, it's like a, a medium, not a true, but again, this is semantics and stuff, but yeah, so <laughs> soil is, uh, is, yeah, just a combination of those four components. And, and mine is just a, uh, a buffered version of that i suppose you could you could call it but yeah it's just basically like making a cake you even have to bake it so yeah you see when it comes to soil as well if you're a new grower and this sounds too complex to you, you can always go down to the garden center the garden store wherever whatever it's called in where you are and just get a normal bag of soil and that will it will go for a while but you'd have to buy nutrients with that as well so after a few weeks, the soil will start yeah. using up, uh, the plant will use up all of the nutrients in the soil. So you need to replace that by adding nutrients in a bottle. Uh, and this, these are the different kinds of soil. So, you know, if you go to the, the store, buy it in a bag, after a few months, right. uh, after a few weeks, uh, anything up to a month, really, you'll start noticing the plants looking hungry. And that's when you have to top up the soil. And then we have the super soil. Super soil is it's just rammed full of nutrients, pretty much, right, TG? Well, in proper proportions, yeah. yeah you can yeah. overdo it, you know. But like I said, it's just like a cake, you know. You don't put too much of too much fucking sugar in, or else it'll be too sweet. Just like you don't put too much, you know, blood meal in, or else it'll be too nitrogeny. So basically, mm -hmm. and that's what my soil is. I've developed it over a number of years to find those right ratios so it doesn't burn your plant it has enough nutrients to last in a three gallon pot approximately 100 to 120 days full you know so that's enough usually for about a 40 day veg and then an eight to nine to ten week flower and there's like 
with a super soil too there and there's a lot of easy ways to to supplement and, and stay organic while also feeding the microbes that are in there and, and as well if that needs if you're into growing like longer flower shit but yeah essentially um that's it right so what okay. uh, that's uh the super soil then when it's got all the the amendments in the soil yeah so then we have living soil and this is mm -hmm. where it's got shitloads of microbes in and the microbes do the work right essentially you're, that's the idea is you want to have a self-perpetuating system because microbes like basically when they eat each other and they shit or die those nutrients from when they're eating each other and eating stuff in the soil like that you feed them like molasses and kelp and, and organic matter that's just there um the plant can use those uh essentially the microbe detritus um, whether it's their actual detritus or the exudates from the microbes themselves. Mm -hmm. And the microbes will form a relationship with the plants as well, eating what the plants exude, which are called root exudates, mostly. The roots will crap out stuff the microbes like, and then they form this symbiotic relationship and kind of, it keeps going, you know, they feed each other. As long as there's enough food and room and optimal conditions for those microbes to grow and stay alive and perpetuate, which... Mm -hmm is is the trick with that you know you have to have a pretty large volume in order to do that yeah which is why i call my soil microbially fortified it's not relying on the microbes but in case yeah, you know just, situation. Happen, uh, just in case yeah exactly so and the, the, yeah, these are this, yeah and these are the kind of soils you might see if you go to the shop because nowadays you can get uh water only soils is what they're called and you might be able to buy like 50 liters for 35 quid or something like that. They, they can be pretty expensive compared to usual soil, but you won't need the nutrients necessarily for the water only soils. They're pretty much fortified with their own nutrients to last about 12 weeks. But that's yeah. not the same when you buy the cheaper soil. That, that's going to last like three or four weeks. and You'd have to use uh, nutrients for that. I think a big misnomer is just the fact that those bags of soil, like you mentioned, are called potting soil potting soil but um, not all of which, a potting soil is just for the baby plants right and then you have more of a, a, a strong yeah soil. yeah mm -hmm. but like even yeah potting soil really isn't soil potting soil is just mostly peat with a bit of perlite probably and maybe some more mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um there's no like grit in it right there's no solid uh, there's no like clay there's no sand there's no uh any it's of the really actual... like shit. it's like cocoa man you know yeah yeah it, essentially it's a soilless medium mm -hmm. until like i do you mix it in with all that other nutrients and then it becomes this pre-fortified super soil you know it's like a cake right you could just eat flour and then you could eat the sugar and you could eat all of that but that's not a cake right mm -hmm. that's essentially what you kind of would be doing with with the not mixing um all of those ingredients into the soil before you try and use them um which is why it's better to mix them in and let it cook and do the microbe thing yeah it's, but sorry yeah yeah it's it's essentially hydro you know when you get down to it um because you have to add nutrients exactly like you said like right away right because there's none in there so I mean, the shit as well in the uk here when you go to the garden center you'll see you know a bag of compost and compost isn't soil it's like a really strong version of soil and if you use just straight up compost for your cannabis plants they're going to have issues compost is for mixing with soil to add more nutrients to it or you can top dress around the top of a plant pot with some compost and just water it in and that will feed the plants a little bit but if you plant a plant directly into compost it's yeah. probably going to have issues there's way too many nutrients in there but of course certain... sorry tg I oh, don't no, continue, sorry. You're saying um, the best way to get compost is by making your own. That's the best way to do it. If you make well, your own compost, then you don't need to fuck around with buying it yeah. and all that shit. Yeah, most of the compost I, I see in our garden centers is just too heavy for, for young plants. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Compost is highly, highly variable. It really, really depends on what it's made of, how it mm -hmm. was cured and stored. Some compost is like heavily salt laden because they, they use like manures and stuff in it and things. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be careful with store-bought compost, A. Um, and B, yeah, it's it's not really for growing plants in. Certain plants, like um, if you're into compost, you can do heap composting and grow squash. Squash loves growing in just mm -hmm. fucking compost piles. But yeah, in in, in actively composting compost, plants have a fuck of a time because it's really hot and stuff and there's lots of 
microbial activity that's not normal to soil because it's not really soil. It's basically a, a really rich organic, like not a soup. If you make compost tea, then it's a soup, but it has like microbes out the ass. It's got lots of like humic matter and, and fall, like the fulvic uh, acid shit. That's all kind of built into there. You get or like drainage because the uh, the material itself is great for opening up the soil and allowing water to like percolate through instead of just hammering through. And it also helps with water retention. Um, the main thing I use it for is all of those, but I use it for an infusion of microbes too back into my soil about every three weeks using compost tea. Mm -hmm. um, so compost is like probably one of the best things. If you're going to make your own soil, I you almost have to have it. And like Mackie said, making your own properly because uh, it's really easy. Even in Saskatchewan here, where it gets to be minus fifty, I still make the shit out of it. Yeah, and it is extremely free, you know. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you're making it almost. You know where it's sourced. You know, what I'm saying? you know, it's 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 the best thing, you know. And it's amazing to watch how like when you really get it going, it's like. I love going out there and like opening the shit up and being like, oh, it dropped fucking six inches. Wow. You know, it's really cool. It's alchemy. It's it's the closest thing to alchemy I think we can do, to be honest. And then you have, a you know, that other compost as well, the vermi compost, which is just a fancy name for worm shit, pretty much. Good yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. awesome. that, that's the best shit. That's the black yeah. gold. That is. If you Wild got that, larva, use that, lots of different things. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'll do that. Yeah. Any other soils that yeah. like we're missing out here? I mean, you, you did the main, uh, the, the shit in the bag, the living soil, the super soil, vermicompost. Yeah, well, things that aren't soil, cocoa. Mm -hmm. Most potting soils, I don't, like, they have the name on the bag, but like I said, they're, yeah. they're not as complete as they need to be to be considered a, mm -hmm. a true soil. It's pretty specific, much, the soil like has definition. got, like, uh, life in it, nutrients in it, and everything is available to the plant straight yeah. in it. You just have to water it, and the plant will take it from it. For hydroponic mediums, like we discussed last week, you have to add the nutrients to that from the start. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there'll be problems. Now, so, there's, a real, there's a really, really common soil that you see in almost every garden center. It's called ProMix. And that's one that we probably should talk about. I mean, yeah, it's in most cases, if you're buying something called ProMix, it's basically an inert media that has mm -hmm. very little nutrition in it. And you cannot use it by itself to grow in. Yeah. If you it's do, you have very poor with... results. Yeah. Like you guys like your canna and stuff, right? That's what you would mm -hmm. use with ProMix, I think, right? Pretty much. Yeah. You want to run it like hydroponic or you can enrich it with compost and yeah. nutrients right. and stuff and make a soil out of it. But by itself, and it doesn't run very well. You can use like, like you don't have to use canna and stuff. The way I used to grow before I, I made my super soil, I used to grow in potting soil, but I would use stuff like uh, fish emulsion and fish hydrolysate and stuff, you know, organic Mm -hmm. fertilizers which which are great you know a lot you know you can use those just fine but essentially it was still hydroponic because it wasn't just the soil that was feeding it right i, I had to be in there watering and, and feeding on a regular mm -hmm. schedule just like with cocoa so mm -hmm. yeah so what are the pros and cons then you know last week we uh discussed but well, let's actually cover the soil outside before we move on to the pros and cons you know, when you're planting a plant outside in the garden, you want to make sure that the soil is good. So in, in yeah. most cases, I would say it's a good idea to dig a hole, fill that with some compost, uh, some soil, which you bought from the shop, either the living soil or super soil or normal soil, whatever it is, and plant your plants in that in a hole in the ground rather than using the soil that's in your back garden because it might not be good enough to grow the, the plant. You want it to be done right. But if you know that you have good soil and you grow many plants in the soil in your back garden and they all grow lovely, then just plant some plants into it and you should do okay. But, you know, it's not just about the nutrient value. It's about the density of the soil as well. You need to have good drainage. It needs to be able to push its roots through nicely. So just bear that shit in mind. You, know, you should be able to test your soil in your back garden to see if it's any good for growing it. Yeah, there was one thing that a, a, a grower told me a long time ago, and it's advice that I followed quite a bit in, uh, in growing anything outside. Because um, I live down in, in the south, and, you know, water runs downhill. So most rivers drain from north to south in this country. So we have a lot of river deltas around here, meaning we have a lot of clay in our soil. So if you're doing what Mackie would say about wanting to replace poor soil with good soil here, 
if you dig a hole in clay and put in a light potting soil, you basically just built a bowl. And every time it rains, your bowl is gonna fill up completely and you'll drown your root system. So you have to pay attention when you have situations like that. Your, your soil that you replace needs to be a similar density to what you took out of the hole, or you can raise, raise the planting up slightly and give it drainage that way. But when you're planting directly in the ground, consider your drainage. If you have poorly draining soil, you need to raise your planting up and give it some way that the root system can breathe. Yeah, oxygen is important, man. Big time. Clay Clay's awesome, but too much of it, yeah, just is like, boom, you know? Yeah, and you gotta be able to get that water away from the root system or it'll still rot, it's just that simple. Yeah. But, so the uh, pros and cons, man, where are we with this? I mean, we discussed yesterday the, the pros and cons, so we only need to cover these briefly really and then if you want to know more about the pros and cons between hydro and soil then go check out the last episode but i mean one of the pros i would say definitely of soil is it's a lot less work once mm -hmm. you've done the initial setup and you've mixed up the soil and you know you got your plants in it then all you pretty much have to do is water it or if it's growing outside you really just have to do nothing it, it will do everything itself and you, this is because you've because uh, you've grown outside recently, and you much. Do you have to feed your plant or anything like that when it's in the back garden? No, no. Just That's one of the reasons thing. I like soil so much is because mm. it is so low maintenance. Yeah, I don't have to worry. I just have water. You seen it. my plant? I didn't do fuck all of that eight foot plant in my yard. <laughs> yeah, thing is huge. Yeah, that's fantastic. Then you don't have to like run to the store and buy more nutrients or like do any of that stuff. You just plant it mm. and. Let nature do its thing. Let nature do its thing. It's rather beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It is indeed. That is achievable too in indoors too. Like that was the point of my super soil. Like I said, I developed it because I used to work up north um, for like three or four weeks at a time. And so the girlfriend, you know, she's a chemist. So you'd think she'd be good at mixing stuff and things. Hmm. But green thumb is pretty black. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I, I was like, I need to not have my plants die. And so I just made this soil that she all she needed to do was water it. And uh, here we are, you know, water only. Fuck feeding. It's bullshit. <laughs> now, see, that's, I mean, point. that is one of the good points as well right there is that you don't have to feed it. If you're using living soil or super soil, then, I mean, it, you might have to when it comes to the end of the life cycle of the plant. Yeah, it might be. Every plant's different, mm -hmm. right? So, but you, but, yeah. you do have a chance of just going for the whole grow without any nutrients. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's definitely the idea for me when I grow in soil. It's just to add water. It's so easy to do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's the, that old, um, the bro science as well, where they say, yeah, cannabis grown in organic soil is better, tastes better at least than cannabis that's been grown in hydroponics. And you know, that's always up for debate, but that's something you, that you can consider as well. Right. Well, my my response to that is everybody needs to grow their own and start fucking sending in some tests here you know mm -hmm. especially as canadians Any send canadians it into tg oh, he will let you know <laughs> well yeah. you know really i really. could i could probably tell no probably not you know but i think the differences are pretty minute if they are mm -hmm. there i'm sure they're there you know there has to be a difference because they're different but it would be very interesting so yeah we should like crowdsource this i i got some data on on some so super soil grown uh charlotte's angel and i like to send my shit in it's just i can't afford to fucking do it all the time so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know more people to marry so let's do it yeah man. with that turfs like an organic organic versus uh i don't know though you know i smoke some good hydro weed like we talked about last time so yeah yeah there's a, a new thing going around right now called syngenics that uh it's it's the big deal you know they say that's the best of both worlds you get mm. you get to uh, push them a little bit harder with with the synthetics, but you get to still get that good flavor and everything out of the organic side of mm. it. So the best of both worlds. I'm just learning about it these days. But mm. That's the new buzzword, syngenics. So some nutrients you can use for soils. You know, when you're using just normal soil and you need to add some salt based nutrients to keep it running. Uh, I mean, what, what can you use? I would recommend a Dutch Pro. That seems to be a good one. I haven't ever actually used any nutrients in my soils so i wouldn't be able to recommend what's good i've never actually used any but from what i've seen dutch pro is a good one anybody else got ideas for um 
And you, uh, Canna also makes some good nutrients for soil as well. Canna Terra is called T E R double R A. That one. A lot of people around Percy's were using that BioBiz line. BioBiz, that's another one. Mm-hmm. Don't know anything about it though. I've mm-hmm. never used it. If well, you want to stick into the more organic side of things, which, you know, it's debatable. It depends on the source of the stuff. Um, and I don't have any brands in mind because I just buy whatever the fuck is in the store at the time. But fish hydrolysate for nitrogen and phosphorus and liquid kelp are the three bigs, you know, and most of the, like, I think those three also include a lot of micronutrients. And I use Epsom salts for magnesium. Um, so and sulfur, I guess, too. But, if, you know, if you have that available, hydrolysate. Fish emulsion is okay, too. It's just not quite as rich in nutrients in it because it's processed in a more processy way than the hydrolysate is. But uh, so yeah. I think when you go for growing in soil like that, that's how you should be doing it. If you want to grow in, if you're going to use salt-based nutrients anyway, just go for cocoa. Yeah. yeah it's, I mean, they both it's, work, don't get yeah, at all, yeah. for sure, for sure. But, yeah whatever you're into, right? Or what's available to is important. And what are the cons there? What are the cons for growing in soil? I mean, it can be smellier. It definitely smells more than hydro does, but it oh, will yeah. smell like soil. It, it won't be too bad unless the soil starts to go bad. But you have more you know, chance of uh, bugs. Sorry, TG, you say, say something. Well, I was just going to interject. Nobody ever really has said, holy fuck, it stinks in here because of my soil when I brought them in. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, it does smell like more like soil. So mm-hmm. you're not into that, but. Yeah, sorry. Bugs. Bugs, man. Bugs are more likely to be found in soil because the eggs and shit just live happily in soil rather than hydro. But if you, yeah. it's not like it's any more, it's any easier for you to get bugs into the ground. They'll come in the same way. If you're getting good soil, then they, it won't really have any bugs in it. It's you still bringing them in from outside. And that, that's yeah. where the problems come in most of the time. So, if you take well, the right precautions, then you shouldn't see bugs in either medium. It is one thing about using your homemade compost. Generally, you're not steaming it and, and like sterilizing it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Maybe like some of these bigger companies do, which is kind of defeating the purpose because you don't want to kill your microbes. So, yeah, you might get a few bugs, maybe a few weed seeds. But like, you know, if, if you have a proper soil based environment with a, a healthy microbial mass in your rhizosphere and potentially on your leaves you know if you're spraying compost tea and stuff like that mm-hmm. pests should probably not have a very easy time taking hold anyway and if you're introducing beneficials like nematodes or predatory mites or whatever uh then it's yeah they should be good you know i have pests i have thrips and and uh fungus gnats right now but they're not like I'm not worried at all about them because they're not, I don't, you know, they're not out of control at all. And I'm not doing any control other than what's in my soil. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah you know. so, uh, one from South City there in the chat as well said that it takes longer to overcome issues. You know, if you get a, a nutrient deficiency or excess or anything like that, then it's it takes longer True. to get over True. these things in soil. Especially if your soil mix is mixed poorly. You know, I've mm-hmm. seen... Like a lot of the time, uh, uh, I can't remember the brand. I won't say any brands, but like a lot of super soils are too hot for like seedlings or even like just very young plants and stuff. Right. Um, and so, yeah, you can uh, definitely run into issues there, um, which, you know, in that case, sometimes don't recover because they just fry the plant. But because the shit is built into the soil, you don't flush it out like you would with with a excess of cocoa or something like that. Flushing definitely helps. but it's you know if there's too much fucking blood meal in a pocket in there or something or whatever they put in there then you know you can't do much about that so hopefully it's been mixed right but yeah it is harder and slower Mm -hmm. so just bear that in mind it's not all perfect you have to find out what the right balance is you know in between hydro and soil you have to figure out what works best for you man and only you can do that work we can offer advice as much as we like on the podcast and on the forum and shit, but you have to make that decision ultimately and decide what works best for you and why. I mean, soil is, it takes a lot less time than hydroponics. When you're growing in cocoa, you're going to have to water every day. You know, when you're growing in full hydroponics, then unless you get the automated system, then you, you have to check it often, man. Like every day you should be checking it to make sure that EC and the pH is within balance. Yep. 
So it's, I can say I've never, even my current grow, I have 20, I don't know how many, 25 plants or something. Never took the pH on a single pot the mm -hmm. whole time. Mm -hmm. That's then, right. You know, I look at the plant and if it's fucked up, then I'm like, okay, pH is probably off. But mm -hmm. you don't really need to. If, if your shit's in balance, which again, as long as whoever makes your soil has done the right mix and the right research and then proven that it works, you know, because a lot of people just like throw shit together, it seems like. And um, yeah. So but, uh, briefly then, what goes into your soil then, TG? How do you make yours? Well, like I said, uh, I have a big cake pan. I use a child's swimming pool. Mm -hmm. Pictures can be seen pool. on Percy's grow room. Yeah, yeah. There's a nice set of picks that kind of go through the whole process, even the ingredients that I'm dumping in. But yeah, it's a mixture of uh, like bone meal, blood meal, dolomite, lime, compost that I make, worm castings. Um, fuck else is in there? Potting soil, obviously, is a base you know something to mix everything into um probably some manure yeah some steer or sheep manure mm -hmm. um and they all serve various like i give a pretty good description of why uh, i use each of these ingredients and what they're doing in my soil so if uh, i won't go into that because that's I, i'll probably leave a bunch of shit out and then i'll feel bad after the podcast so go read it <laughs> yeah um it's if you're really thing. interested, you know, because I, yeah, I mean, there's, there's reasons why I do everything. I don't just throw like fucking basalt rock dust in there um, because uh, there's no reason to in a soil like mine. Whereas uh, I find most other super soils have like rock dust and things like that, which are great if you're going to use them for years, but those are very slowly available and don't really do a heck of a lot in the short period of a one grow cannabis. So, I mean, that type of thing, right? That's why I use the shit that I use. It's not because I don't know about basalt and stuff, but anyway, yeah. So it's like, uh, each, each ingredient fulfills one of the, the main things that cannabis needs in the right proportion. Most of them are slow, slow release. So like nitrogen, for example, the blood mail that I put in is readily available. It gets used up in the, in the, vigorous vegetative growth there's a little bit of nitrogen in bone meal which is a little bit slower at least because bone meal is a bit harder for the plants to get into um you know it requires acidic soil under seven and or microbial activity to release a lot of the phosphorus in there and mm -hmm. also there's nitrogen in there and calcium as well but um yeah so those kinds of like balances right uh um, as the plant ages it uses less nitrogen so then more phosphorus more potassium it gets into i'll do it usually a top up of some compost um usually come when i flip the flowers is usually when i'll fill the rest of the pot up um infuse it with microbes again i'm doing compost tea uh drenches mycorrhizal fungi is, is always added before i plant um specifically the glomus intraridaceae or the yeah intraridaceae and glomus mossiae two species that I've read are the ones that have an affinity to cannabis specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, whatever product you buy, try to have those two in. And uh, yeah, just kind of let it do its thing after that, you know. But uh, well, of another, uh, like a con and something that people should be aware of when they are growing in soil as well is mm -hmm. overwatering and underwatering. It's important to get that shit down. I think that's... Um, people can easily overwater the plants it's better yeah. to let the soil dry out a bit until the pot's a bit light you know not very light you don't want to dry it out completely because when it gets completely dry like that the microbes die off and you want to try and keep them alive but you don't want it to stay wet the whole time either if it's wet the whole time especially the top two inches of the soil that's where bugs are going to lay their eggs so if you let that shit dry out for the top two inches then that's going to help kill off the bug eggs inside the soil but don't let it dry out too much because you need the microbes to stay alive. So that fine balance, and it takes practice to get there. It's important new growers, for new growers will kill them with kindness sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nitrogen or oxygen, like we talked about like a bit before, is important. And if you're always dumping water and keeping it saturated, not a lot of probably oxygen is going to be at the roots, and then you'll mm -hmm. just rot them, right? So yeah. not great. Wet and dry cycle, it's cool. Cannabis. Yeah. A I don't choice. let mine dry out like as you know as soon as you dump water and then it's fucking pouring out the bottom that's mm -hmm. not as dry as you want but yeah like a, 
a slightly damp sponge maybe about you know the, the rule is like 50 percent. You, you water it fully weigh mm-hmm. that you know or get an idea how much that weighs and then when it's 50 percent less then that's when you should water that's kind of the rule i vaguely go by most of the time yeah so now you just go to pick up the pot and if yeah. you're like oh that's heavy that's fine you know, yeah you don't need to put anything in it but if you pick it up and be like nearly fall over because you're expecting it to be much heavier then add some water to that shit yeah it take practice it take you doing your own research and your own practice with your own plants to figure out how much water it needs and how much yeah. it can get away without you know just like every three days every two days but i found with my soil when i was growing in the living soil it, i could go for four or five days sometimes without having to add water crazy lots of variables i mean too mm-hmm. like if mm-hmm. your, your plant is huge and you're in a small pot like then yeah probably every day if it's cold probably and even... if it's warm yeah exactly yeah cold but, weather definitely impairs mm-hmm. a pig for sure um cool. No, see, this yeah. is why people need to do their own experimentation with their own soil and see what works no, for I... them. Cons, though, I don't have a lot of bad things to say about it. No, there's really mm. not a lot of cons, man. It, it really is. It is a lot more work. You like the way I do it. You need a bit of room, because mm-hmm. you know, I use a, a swimming pool to mix it. You can't do that if you're in an apartment building or something, for mm. example. Or if your nosy ass neighbors are like, "Hey, what are you doing yeah. with that pot?" I've done mine in, in the bath, mate. In the bath, <laughs> yeah. the missus yeah. was not happy. <laughs> no, no, it's dust, and especially with one of my ingredients is perlite. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That shit, if you're not in a ventilated area, do not fuck with it because, yeah, you'll get the big chunks, but there's a very fine dust, and the stuff is basically silica. And if you inhale that, it's going to be a bad time. Mm-hmm. So make sure you're well ventilated if you're fucking yeah. with perlite. Indeed. Yes. Yep. So, I mean, there's so much to be said for soil. It's been around for millions of years and helped plants grow for a very long time. If you can build your own and make it perfect. 50 million. Yeah. Yeah. 450 million years. Yeah. 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 Crazy shit, man. So, you yeah. know, let us say if you're a member of Perseus, of course, go and visit over there. If you go to build your own soil, we'd like to see the process and how you did it, what you added and where you got yeah. your ingredients from too because that's an important factor of it as well you're doing all this to try and be a little bit more environmentally friendly so you try and locally source your ingredients and that's the most difficult thing i mean you can locally source your your compost because you can make that yourself but when you're getting rock dust and shit like that it can be more difficult so just yeah. do the best you can uh, keep it simple too don't like you know it's the same as in coco you know with the big boob girls on the, the labels of the bottles and they're like look at that shit and it's fucking like <laughs> magnesium sulfate and water or some bullshit for 50 bucks for a liter hey you start talking oh. about my nutrients again man i like those yeah. pictures <laughs> yeah. well not all of it's bad i'll say but no, some no, of it's snake oil and but the same applies in in this realm of things too there's a lot of like you know shit like compost activator for example that's kind of like snake oil all you need is a handful of fucking garden soil that is all the microbes you need to get the shit started you don't need to go buy a 10 dollar bag of compost activator to start your compost right um so yeah keep it simple um grow like we've been growing for hundreds of years cannabis is a, a very hungry plant but it's no different it's just a plant right and in, in terms of its bot- botanical ness mm-hmm. it's a fucking plant so mm-hmm. grow it like a plant right that's right. And of course, if you need any help or advice, then you can find us over on PursuitsGrowing.com and people can visit your website too, TG. Yeah, they can. Uh, they won't find much right now, but I'm in the process of updating it with some fantastic information and pictures and Sweet. stuff and content. <laughs> Creating content. It's fucking fun. Yeah, it's <laughs> great fun, mate. It's fucking, it's so much yeah. fun. That's why Check I do YouTube, it. You know? It's so yeah, much yeah. fun. Fun. I like doing it. I just the the <laughs> fucking bureaucracy, I guess, in terms of editing and that shit. I just I like making a video and then I'm done, right? And then everything mm-hmm, else mm-hmm. kind of sucks. But yeah, YouTube is good for that as well. I have some videos of how to shit. And I'm gonna make some compost. I think a series about that too, because I'm gonna be building a big compost uh, thing in my backyard here before the winter starts. Maybe so, that'll be good for next week's episode: how to make compost for growing cannabis. I think that'd yeah. be a good episode. Compost. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Compost uh, yeah, we... and worm castings. We'll do that. Yeah, vermicompost. That would be that would be because that's something 
everyone could do. I just actually embarrassingly recently got my own vermicompost for Sweet. first time, and they are fucking eating the shit out of everything. Mm -hmm. Fuck are they shit? Mm -hmm. It's great. I, was, I, I got fucking thousands now, man. Thousands. Yeah. It's it's super fun to watch too because like you put I put a corn cob in there and they're just like fuck we love corn. And like, yeah, they love avocado cool. man. Give them avocado. Yeah. That's like it's easy that after them. They fucking love that shit. They don't like weed leaves very much on the fuckers. Cause yeah, mine leaves. love that shit. Mm. Yeah, they just prefer the corn and the watermelon. So oh, it's good. Yeah, because I, I only fed mine weed leaves at that point. Yeah, yeah, so, I guess. So you know, because... it's like they could they couldn't have the corn. They couldn't have a choice. It's like this is what you're getting eat it shit yeah. it out that's the way it's gonna be <laughs> yeah yeah worm's cool man so we have some listener mail we should quickly get to before we wrap things up we got uh, one from improper weed viking i'm struggling to answer why my northern lights auto did a 12-week veg and what i thought was mutated genetics may have been reveg but autos don't do that so why did it do it very strange mate sometimes the genetics are just off man i mean i know it says it was an auto but it can it's uh, autos are still made with photo period genes in there as well and sometimes some of the genetics can be more dominant than the, what they're supposed to be you know, they'll express more than what you expected them to so rather than expressing the auto genetic like it was supposed to it was expressing the photo period genetic instead which is a very rare case of it happening but it's going to happen sometimes does anybody else think about that monkey what are you saying i mean totally totally normal what you said there is um i mean we see it all the time or versus what people said that you know it was bought at an auto seed and it still hasn't flipped and it's been eight weeks something like that so yeah it happens mm -hmm. um i've never heard of of a true auto re though that's that's the only thing you know so mm -hmm. I would say something in the genetics just is, isn't right with that one. You get some weird things sometimes. Yeah. Well, you say, Marge, you grow a lot of autos, right? Yeah, I grow a few. I've never had this happen to me before. Mm -hmm. Honestly, where nothing has worked the way it's supposed to. So I'm not sure I can really answer that. Yeah. I, I've grown many autos as well. And it's never happened to me. Yeah. That's why I like them is because they're also another like problem free kind of mm -hmm. thing. They just do their thing. You put them in soil with some autos and it's keep like them happy. growing yeah. yeah keep them happy and let them do their chop them down yeah. three months later you're good yeah Pretty much crazy how easy it is what are you saying teach what do you think about this uh i don't know i guess yeah that seems fucked but uh maybe it was mislabeled maybe the mm. genetics mm. were just uh i don't know no you know plants are weird they're uh living organisms that sometimes do weird things so but i don't know i'm sure there's a better explanation than that but yeah strange yeah just you know cut your losses go again it's probably down to genetics probably yeah these fucking breeders doing it you know yeah you know pollen chucking assholes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean well sometimes you can pop you may pop three or four of the same strain and, and you'll end up with a runt for no reason you just got one plant that's different and it just doesn't want to grow yeah. And sooner or later you chuck it because you know, it just wasn't meant yeah. to be. And the more you grow, the more you'll see, you know, just statistically. So, so yeah, you, you learn exactly when to say, no, this ain't happening. Yeah. I've had, I have fasciation in my tent for the first time in 12 years. I've never had, and I've grown a fucking lot of plants, but fasciation really fucked. So some, some questions on filmy bowls as well. It's got some difficult ones here. Questions about living soil. One, how did soil first become soil? We briefly yeah. touched that 450 million years ago, you know? It's, yeah. It's complex on that, bro. Here. Lecture like, number one in university. Really, you don't want a hard questionnaire or anything, do you? No, it's not hard. I mean, it's back, effectively, <laughs> about 400-ish, 450 million years ago, where the first land plants came onto land. Before then, there was no plants on land. It was all in the oceans with algae and cyanobacteria and phytoplankton and shit mm -hmm. like that. Um, and so, yeah, the first plants came to the Earth's surface. They were like lichens and like moss and like shit like that, non-vascular plants that eat rocks, essentially. Because that's all there was. There's nothing else. No soil because soil hadn't been made yet. 
because the only activity that was uh, taking place in terms of weathering the rocks that have been in erupting from volcanoes and shit because early earth was a horrible place that was full of volcanic activity and uh over time well early early earth that's four point you know four billion years ago 450 million years ago is very close to us compared to four billion years ago but during all that time it was a shitty place shitty time on earth there wasn't much going on mm -hmm. and so the thought is that the land plants come on they start sucking co2 they to cool the earth glaciers start forming grinding up all these rocks a lot of it's basalt so very mineral rich uh, rock um and so you know it's the same reason why there's good uh, soil under volcanoes they always say um because of that so between the microbes eating the rocks and the glaciers growing or grinding the rocks up and then the might or the the plants sorry um when they die that's organic matter mixed with minerals in the rocks and then gases and then here we have soil and then bacteria eats it and poos it and it turns into food for the plants again yeah plants evolve start becoming more complex you know there's more nutrients in dissolved like rock uh there's water that forms that's loaded with minerals instead of just a few minerals so bigger plants can grow eventually and then they crack rocks and you know and then millions of years go by and through those processes and like i said before depending on the uh what kind of rocks are there and what kind of microbes and all those types of things you get the different soils that you have uh, all over the earth i think uh jello there in chat summed it up really nicely a long long time ago a load of shit died now we have soil <laughs> yeah effectively brilliant there you go there you go phil that's for you that one <laughs> that's the cliff note version there you go <laughs> yeah but that's where soil came from Allegedly, allegedly, the Earth okay. is only six thousand years know. old. TG, Touché, did you not right. know? Did you not know that? Yeah. Yeah. And it's flat. Yeah. You know, <laughs> makes things very yeah, complicates things a bit. But uh, it's, it's really cool. To, it's, it's really cool to watch that process. Though you can still see it if you go into areas where they have large basalt sure. flows, and you you may be walking and for long ways, and all of a sudden see just one sapling, maybe a first sapling, sitting there in the middle of a crack in the basalt. Yeah. And it's it's growing. It's because yeah. that crack had enough microbes and was starting to eat the basalt, and a lot of debris has fallen in that crack and decayed. And so slowly but surely, that tree is going to crack that basalt open and make room for the next tree. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. an amazing Lots process. Are amazing, man. They don't like mm -hmm. they've been around here fucking way longer than us. We're shit yeah. compared to plants. Body yeah, desire. Amazing things that things can do. Watch that shit. Buy that shit. So we have yeah, no, number two here. Uh, what temperatures do the microorganisms prefer? Um, the the ones we care about, I would say. What? Like just like we like. If it's good for you, it's good for them. Yeah, yeah. Room. Temperature, yeah. Not too much. hot, not too cold. Once it gets over like uh, seventy degrees Celsius, then it starts to kill off some of the microbes when you compost them, right? Yeah, you don't want to be that hot. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're dumping anything, if your plants are that hot, like holy fuck, <laughs> is that is that too hot? Seventy degrees C Celsius for growing plants, I would say. Well, no, yeah, I mean in compost, you know, when the oh. microbes are being killed off when compost is heat, you know. Yeah, that's pretty hot. I hit a new record this year, just like two weeks ago. I hit sixty Celsius, um, and that's wow. pretty. You know, you're you're killing off pathogens. You're killing off like E. coli and shit like that. You're killing Eggs off weeds bugs. And that. Yeah. But that's hard to achieve and yeah some of the the microbes i mean that's okay still because the thermophilic microbes that are there are just they go fucking crazy but they do they kill off a lot of the, the mesophilic they're called medium temperature microbes and yeah they just they can't handle it so if you get really hot you can actually do damage to your compost uh, microbial population but getting so hot is really fucking hard uh, to be honest huh. but yeah 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 I'm, I'm no composting expert really so <laughs> i'm a master composter motherfucker <laughs> that's my title okay don't okay. fuck with me uh, we'll, we'll add it as your rank on the forum no no master actually composter. He, had, he has uh he actually has something on it that's actually apropos i think it was called organic master did i Ooh. yeah that's uh, uh what is it manic organic yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
But there's these, these weird things that the new forum software gave some people a nickname and you, you, you came up as manic organic. I did write that in my profile at some point, I remember, but I don't know. I, I it think it somehow or another scans some, something out of these things. I don't know. That's a cool nickname. I'll take it. Manic organic. Yeah. It's not an insult. So we have yeah. one more from Phil here. I have witnessed dirt covered for 40 years that it was uh, well, uh, something must be wrong there. I have witnessed dirt covered for 40 years that it was so dry that the water had a hard time getting it wet. What actually causes that? Anybody know what that, what causes you know, It's like when you are, um, when your soil gets too dry and you try and pour uh, yeah. on top of it and then it, it just runs out of fucking parts. Hydrophobic. Yeah. 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 I can make a hypothesis. Okay. Okay. Right. That's all you can do, really. Yeah. <laughs> Hypothesize. I've got to guess. Well, I think, well, we'll keep going. Go I ahead. think this is what's going on. There's there's different types of water in soil. There's three types. There's uh, I had it up here. I I, I know it. Steam, liquid, and gas. Right? No. Uh, gas. No. Liquid and solid. There's... Steam, water, no. and ice. Yes. Those are the different phases of water. Oh, yes, but... oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> um, which there shouldn't be ice in your soil. If there's ice, then that's not good. But no, there's gravitational water, there's capillary water, and there's hygroscopic water. Um, the first two are not what we're concerned about here. I think it's, I think, don't quote me on this because I don't actually know, but we should talk to a water scientist maybe. But hygroscopic water is the water that's basically bonded really really tightly to the soil particles that doesn't interact with like the nutrient exchange and, and everything that's dissolved in the pore space that the plants can access it's basically like lubricant for you know plant the soil i guess i don't exactly know too much about hygroscopic water but when it goes away the soil becomes hydrophobic exactly like monkey said and it repels water because there's no attraction electrical attraction between the hygroscopic water um it's now just a bare soil surface which seems to want to repel the water because it's electrically charged right this is all about charges um of uh electrical charges in the water bro and... did you say you were hypothesizing this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is my a... hypothesis like you know this is just what yeah. i'm guessing at well, this is what my uh, guess is because I don't actually know. I'm just saying this is what I think is yeah. happening. Yeah, and when that water peat, goes, it's a good example it's... of a hydrophobic material though that will do that to, to you though. If you have peat and it's extremely dry, it's very hard to get it to, to, to get wet. You have mm -hmm. to almost soak it. Yeah. So yeah, you have to allow it to just yeah, and it's, exactly it's soak it. That's to do with the microstructure of the actual actually particles of peat. It just it's uh, it's made to actually not get wet. That's why it's lasted so long. I would guess that's why, yeah. Yeah. And so, so your forty-year-old soil was just baked, and all that water's gone. So it's like anti. Up and old. Yeah, but you can restore it with with some water. Yeah, it can okay. be soaked. It'll it'll eventually go down in if it's soaked for a while. Probably mix some organic matter like compost in there would help too. It yeah, that's like, actually layering it with organic that. material and letting the microbes start working on that dry old soil. And then keeping moisture on it would be a real good way to get it revitalized. Yeah. Get those microbes back in there. I uh, would be, even be tempted to introduce uh, JMS or uh, IMO into that if you could. Yeah. Get some microbes be... working. Yeah. That's right. Just add some more microbes, add some water, and it'll get back. Worm keys, anything you can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, worms are the shit, man. But we'll cover that in next week's episode composting and worm composting. We'll do that. It sounds like a good episode. You'll bring up my bin and I'll show you guys how about that. <laughs> Live. Live from the worm farm. <laughs> yeah. I can take my phone downstairs and uh, go mobile. Mm -hmm. But that would be definitely a lot easier than dragging a shitload of vermin compost to that place, bro. Your phone is probably yeah. lighter than that, so do it that way. But yes, I think that's everything for soil then. So we'll uh, we'll move on to the outro. Is there anything to add? No. Yeah, let's do well, outro then. Let's do outro. Yeah, well, I can add one thing, and that is a 420 somewhere right now. So Oh, shit, everybody, yeah. 
Hit your shit, everybody. Hit your shit. It's time for the outro. I just smoked some hash and I didn't even know when it's my 420. Fuck me. That's it. PG's 420. Everybody's (laughs) perfect timing, bro. (laughs) Do it. It's built in, man. there we go everybody that was the episode all about soil again if you need any help or if you need any extra advice regarding soil for growing your own weed then head over to percysgrowing.com start a thread and we'll be more than happy to help you over there if you know anybody who's looking to start their own grow and you think that this episode will help them then it would be awesome if you could share this episode with them the best way to get the podcast to grow and reach more people is by having you guys share it because being cannabis related We don't get treated very nicely by the algorithms on social networks and YouTube and all of those. So we rely on our listeners, you guys, to share the episode with friends and get more people listening. So it would really help if you could share the episode with a friend. But of course, no pressure. Uh, For now, that's it for the Grow Guides. Next next week, we're going to be covering uh, compost and worm castings. So make sure you tune in for that episode so you can learn how to make yourself some free fertilizers for your plants. It's going to be super cool. Uh, the next show is on Sunday at 9 o'clock UK time. And that's going to be on our YouTube channel over on youtube.com slash high and homegrown. We hope to see you over there. But for now, have a great weekend. Again, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for downloading. Thank you for listening. And we'll catch you on Sunday for the live show. Have a good weekend, everybody. Stay high and stay safe. Goodbye. Bye.